Good afternoon all you fabulous Blue Mountains bush carers and swamp carers. My name is John French and I'm one of the Gargary Swamp Care volunteers who are helping restore and create habitat at the gully in Katoomba. Gargary is the local indigenous word for gully. I think the words of Auntie Sharon Halls, a local indigenous elder, sums up the spirit of habitat restoration by community at Gargary the gully. Here's Auntie Sharon. The restoration and the work we do here is extremely important. It's, it's about sharing our story of place, but it's also about bringing back to people the connection we have with everything that happens here. So each plant that we put in has its own story and its own life cycle, and you can feel the past as well as the present. So, just a little bit of background information about the gully. The gully is located to the west and southwest of the Katoomba Business District and includes three main areas. To the south is the Katoomba Falls Reserve Area. The central area is McRae's Paddock. And the northerly most area is what is most commonly known as the gully. And as well as the gully, this area incorporates both the Catalina and Frank Walford parks. This is where most of the Gargary Swamp Care habitat restoration work has and continues to be happening. In 1957, a motor vehicle racetrack was built through the gully, forcibly displacing the community from their homes where they had been for generations. This catastrophic and enormously sad event in the lives of the Gully community was brought about by local businesses supported by the council, deciding without regard for the Gully people to create the Catalina Road Racing Circuit. The Gully was declared an Aboriginal place in 2002. It was nominated as an Aboriginal place because of its significant pre-contact Aboriginal sites, post-contact settlements and its ongoing occupation by Aboriginal people until forced eviction in 1957. Gargary Swamp Care, under the guidance of the Gully traditional owners and Blue Mountain City Council, commenced habitat restoration and care of the Gully country in 2011. Prior to COVID restrictions, Gargary Swamp Care gathered on the first Sunday of each month at the Gully. At this stage, Gargary Swamp Care is planning on a grand reopening open day on the 6th of February 2022. All will be welcome to check out Gargary's bush and swamp care achievements. No doubt Jane and David, our inspirational council and indigenous team leaders, will be confirming details of this open day in the near future. Keep an eye out in the notices. As I mentioned previously, I'm a volunteer with Gargary, but I'm also a bird watcher, keen bird photographer and a citizen science surveyor. Together with my bird watching partner, local wildlife bird artist Fiona Lumsden, we've been documenting bird sightings at the gully for just on eight years now. BirdLife Australia are the main conservation group for birds in Australia. And as part of their data collection process of bird species and numbers, they have a citizen science data portal called Bird Data. Any data submitted is overseen by scientists at BirdLife to ensure that it is as accurate as possible. Unusual sightings may have to go through a vetting process. Our bird sightings here at the gully are uploaded to the BirdLife Bird Data portal. So bird data from all citizen science reports from the gully has a species count of 99. Oh, 99. Come on, Fiona and John. Just one more species to reach the ton. Righto, enough of my documentary voice. Birdwatcher voice, activate. As I said before, the gully area is a really great place to bird watch. There's a variety of habitats easily accessible to visit in a relatively short distance. I can, I can really recommend a bird watching wander through the gully landscapes. Uh, instead of me going on about how good bird watching is at the gully, how about we head off on a virtual gully bird watching walk instead. First stop, the gully pond area. Well, up the stairs we go, and we're greeted by the gully pond view. Now, if you look around and you don't see 
some Australian wood ducks here somewhere. Your sunglasses are just way too dark. Or maybe you haven't cleaned them for a while. Same goes for the Pacific black ducks. These two species are always floating on the pond or wandering around the grassy banks or the surrounds of the pond. Yeah, just look over there. There's a family of Australian wood ducks, mum and dad and five ducklings. And hawking for insects over the top of the pond is some welcome swallows. These guys have fork tails and one's just taken a breather on one of the old pipes sticking out of the pond. And just over there's a little pied cormorant. These guys are great underwater hunters of pond and lake habitats. See what I mean? It's just picked off of a yabby. Wow, what a mouthful. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you what that ever-present squawk is. Sulfur-crested cockatoos. Along with the wood ducks and the black ducks, these iconic Australian birds are just about guaranteed to be seen here at the Gully Pond area. You know, I grew up in the upper mountains in the 60s and the 70s, and sulphur crested were rarely seen then. Local birdwatching guru Carol Probert says that she remembers her first sighting of a single sulphur crested cockatoo in the upper mountains area in November 1986. And that sighting just happened to be here in the gully. They've since flourished and dominated in the upper mountains landscape at the expense of some other previously more common birds, like the beautiful gang gang cockatoos. The Blue Mountains Bird Observers has a database of local bird observations going back to 1992. You can see from this graph of sulphur crested cockatoo reporting rates from the Upper Mountains area that it shows a steady and now sharply increasing percentage of occurrence. 1992 had a reporting rate of 45% of observations. And in 2020, that reporting rate had increased to 95%. Here's the reporting rate for gang gang cockatoos over the same period. You can see the steady decline of observations, that is until 2019 and 20. It's thought that one of the possibilities of the sharp increase is the loss of gang gang habitat following the 2019-20 fires, which forced them into more urban areas. So let's continue on with our bird wander. Uh, walking on a bit further up the path next to the pond and up here to the right we've come across some recent Gargary swamp care plantings. There's quite a few wattles here and they're looking really healthy. They put on a great show in late winter this year. Golden balls everywhere. Uh, some native grasses have been planted as well and they're looking very healthy too. Now just look across those plantings over the creek line in some shrubs there's a pair of adult crimson rosellas. Wow stunning. And just below them, I just saw a little bit of electric blue bobbing around. Yep, 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 he's just jumped up to have a sticky beak at us. It's a male superb fairy wren in all his glory. And there's a female, close by. Now, if we turn around back towards the western end of the pond, just beyond the concrete cave, we can see some more Gargary environment restoration works. Some sedges and small shrubs have been planted and there's mulch, logs and rocks. And they've been arranged as wildlife habitat. And look, it's paying off already. There's a willy wagtail hunting for insects in the mulch. And over towards the pool area, there's a mast lapwing. So we'll just head across the old racetrack uh, look, there's a sign just to remind us all that any dogs here at the gully should be on a leash at all times. And any rubbish uh, should be disposed of properly. They've got a waste bin there for us. A big thanks to responsible dog owners like Steve. Uh, and there's Floyd there with him, enjoying the walk around the gully. 
So we've just crossed the racetrack road into another Gargri restoration area. There's also a sheltered rest spot here. Throughout the gully there are also some information displays about the history of the gully and its past peoples and their way of life. To our left there's an open grass area where you'll often see some Australian magpies. Australian ravens can also be sometimes seen around these open areas as well. And if you are very lucky, you may even see a scarlet or a flame robin, although these are a lot less common these days. Now, if we walk a little further up the path, just near the old racetrack brick building, look to your right to the restored swamp area. Although Gargory is still having some weed days here. Hey Jane, please don't put me on the Montbrecia control squad. I really hate that. It is really looking a treat compared to the old willow infested days. In this swamp area, you may see some red-browed finches seed eating. And perhaps spot an eastern yellow robin perched on a branch. Right here, continuing along the path, we come to a uh, Wait, just in front of us on the path there. It's a white-browed scrub wren. I reckon these little birds always look cranky. As I was saying, we come into a more bushy area with a bit of tea tree on either side. When these tea trees are in flower, there's an abundance of insects gathering nectar and that means the birds will be after them. Uh, there's a stray to thornbill. This thornbill has a much more stripier face than its slightly larger cousin, the brown thornbill. This area of the gully is a good place for both of these small LBJs, or little brown jobs. A bit further on to the right is another Gargary habitat recovered area. This area was once a bear patch, but look at it now. And there's an eastern spinebill having a bit of an energy top up. Let's head off to the next type of habitat area during our bird walk here at the gully. We're coming into the forest section just up here on our left, near the old racetrack. Now this area is dominated by tall eucalypts with a bushy understory, so it's usually quite an active place for birds. Let's see how we go. Look, there's an, an Australian king parrot sitting in the sun. This bird is an adult male, which has a bright reddish front and head. Man, he does look like the king. And just behind him is old yellow eyes, a pied colour one. A bit further on the path, yeah, just up to our left still, look there's a male satin bowerbird. He's popped out. The male birds take between five to seven years to transform from the more commonly seen green colour of the species to this deep satin sheen form. And there's a male golden whistler. The females are a greyish colour. Oh, and look yum, a hairy caterpillar for lunch. Now, we've had it pretty good today. All the birds have been sitting out in the open. Time for a reality check. There's a skulky Lewin's honey eater, showing us bird watchers and bird photographers how it usually is. And here's a pair of rainbow lorikeets. They're a relatively new blow-in bird for the upper mountains as well. Cow Probits recalls an influx of them in the summer of 2000 and they've been here ever since. And there, up in the high gum branches, there's a spotted partlet. And just behind it, a group of varied satellas. These guys are bark specialist feeders, just like the white-throated tree creeper. Back to ground level, there's a grey shrike thrush. And nearby is the ever-moving grey fantail. And up there staring at us is a spring returnee, a sacred kingfisher. And there's another bark specialist in the upper reaches of that gum, a red-browed tree creeper. Hard birds to spot those. They're much less common than the white-throated tree creeper. And just as we get to the end of this forest section, there's another returning spring bird, a rufous whistler. Along the path we go and we come to the Gully People's Stories area. 
time for a bit of reading and reflection. We come to a fork in the path, so to speak. To the left is the Swamp Walk, which takes a bit of a wander around a part of the perimeter, then cuts through the middle of what I call the Big Swamp. But we're going to turn right and start heading back towards the racetrack. Through another tea tree alley. And just up here on the left is some more Gargary restoration plantings. There's a Grevillea acanthifolia in full bloom. Wow, it's looking great. And look who's taking advantage. It's a New Holland honey eater. Not that you can see it, but just beyond the tea trees on our left is the big swamp. But look above soaring, it's a little eagle. Not a regular sighting here, but it's certainly a special one. And over there is a white-necked heron coming in for a landing. Looks like it's got its landing lights on its wing edges too. Frogs, fish and lizards, look out. You're on its swamp menu. A bit further on, just past the boardwalk, look, there's a yellow-tailed black cockatoo. Back to the racetrack now and we're heading south towards the pond area. Speaking of heading south, look above. There's a semi-constant stream of honey eaters. Being spring, there'll be yellow-faced honey eaters and white-naped honey eaters heading back from their winter northern homes. They'll make the return run northwards next autumn. The autumn honey eater migration is considered one of Australia's natural wonders. The Kadumba Creek area along McRae's paddock and just east of the Gully Pond area is a flyway for this amazing pre-winter, get to where it's warmer event. Hundreds and sometimes thousands of yellow-faced and white-naped honey eaters can pass over a single point in just 20 minutes. There's a red wattle bird, which is a large honey eater. Some red wattle birds also join in the autumn north migration. Now look to our left, there's a grey currawong. Slightly larger, lighter in colour, and more solitary than its pied cousin, the grey currawong is another bird species whose population has decreased over the last 20 years or so. A grey butcher bird has just popped onto the racetrack ahead of us. These smallish birds have a big voice. We're back at the gully pond area. Fiona and I have been doing dedicated two hectare, 20 minute bird surveys around the pond for just on two years now. To date, we've completed 24 random surveys to get data on what birds, species and numbers have been using this area. 47 species so far have been recorded. It'll be interesting to see what effect the recent pond surrounds gargery revegetation plantings have on future bird surveys. I suspect that as the plantings grow, smaller birds may increase in frequency. Small birds need shrubs and understory for food and protection. We're on the final leg of this bird walk now. On the pond, yeah, it's a, it's a hard head. Not seen in large numbers on the pond, only occasionally a single bird, or maybe you'll spot a pair. These ducks used to be called white-eyed ducks. I think, personally, I prefer that descriptive name. And that little ball of fluff floating on the pond? An Australasian grebe. We're back at the pond stairs. A quick count up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 45. Yep, 45 species seen on our bird walk this afternoon. Not bad. A big thanks to everyone for joining me on this virtual bird walk of the gully. I really hope you enjoyed it. Of course, I'd like to finish off with some acknowledgements and thanks. My apologies if I've omitted someone or a group, certainly not intentional. A special mention of gratitude to all the members of the Blue Mountains Bush and Swamp Care community. You are all award winners today. And of course, a final thanks to the traditional owners of the gully, past, present and future. Thank you so much for letting us be part of your country and thank you for letting us help restore country to this wondrous place. After all, the gully is its land.